Hello, my name is David Bruce. So get ready to hear one of the craziest pieces of music you've ever heard, and also one of the most dazzlingly virtuosic piano performances. It's not a piece I wrote, you could say I sort of curated it. So what happened was I was looking for new composers to potentially be part of future collaborations in videos like the Five Composers One Theme projects. So I put out a call and I got hundreds of great responses from composers from all over the world. And it was exciting and I could feel the desire from all these composers to just get on and do something. But of course, even in the best circumstances, I'd probably only use one or two of them every, say, six months or so. So I knew it was going to be a long wait for most of them. And I just felt a bit bad about that. So I wanted to try and find a way to do something more quickly, something that could involve as many of them as possible and involve them straight away in a video. But how to do that? Well, the first thing I thought of was my good friend, the pianist Sequoia, who was featured on this channel a few times before. And he can literally play almost anything. I don't think I've ever found a piece that he can't play. And actually, I think this performance proves that beyond doubt. Sequoia actually told me that this was the hardest piece he'd ever learnt. And believe me, that's really saying something. He told me it took him over 50 attempts before he finally managed to do a complete take he was happy with. So what could be so difficult? Well, my idea was to create a piece in which every composer who wanted to would write exactly five seconds of music. Now, I knew that the people who watch this channel come from all sorts of musical backgrounds, everything from writing musicals to heavy metal to EDM to avant-garde classical. And some I knew wouldn't even necessarily write notated music. They'd compose into their DAWs. So I wanted to accept MIDI files for starters. And I definitely didn't want to limit the stylistic choice of the piece each composer wrote, because I knew there would be a huge range. So I thought the best thing really would be to embrace this wild variety and the piece would surely end up as a sort of kaleidoscope or a montage of all these different composers. So there's two ideas that I thought might help glue the overall piece together. One is the idea of an exactly five second period of time and the other is the notes in each of these chords here. So I thought we'd tell the composers they could write what they like but they have to start with one of these chords. So I realised, of course, that if I tried to allocate a chord to each composer, I might end up in trouble if some of them didn't complete the task. So I needed something that was a bit more flexible. So I figured I would just give them all a choice of any of these chords, and then I would try and piece that together later. And we'll come back to that in a minute, but the second idea was that each piece lasts exactly five seconds. So one of these chords would return every five seconds throughout the piece. And this is a concept I've had running around in my brain for quite a while now. And it came about from an article I read years ago by the French composer Gérard Grise. And he was talking about how musical time is perceived differently depending on how much is happening within a allotted period of time. So I thought this was an interesting idea to test out musically and have a set period, a five second period which would be like a five second downbeat, and then see how that gets stretched and warped in our perception depending on what's going on within it. So you can hear this pulse which is going every five seconds while I'm talking. That pulse I'm sure will feel very different when there's a lot of words filling the time compared to when it's silent. And we can certainly test this idea out further with the piece. Sequoia used a five second click track in his ear so that each new piece does start exactly on the five seconds or as near as humanly possible. This is all something that I experimented with myself in a piece called Contradance, where I put this downbeat every five seconds, and I found various ways that you could create bars with different metronome markings that each last exactly five seconds. And I ended up sending some of these through to the composers so they had a few options. So for example, the easiest option is a 5-4 bar where the quarter note equals 60. But there's also plenty of others. And of course, it's even theoretically possible to include Ritardandi and a cello randi within the five seconds. It's just quite hard to play. And of course it was very hard to play anyway because every five seconds there's a change of tempo. Somehow Sequoia had to get each new tempo in his head and ready to go instantly every five seconds for a nine minute piece. That's one of his most mind-blowing achievements here. When I sent him through all of the five second pieces I had no intention that he would play them all through in one go. I was thinking he would do maybe a few of them or maybe just record them individually and then I'd piece them together later. But no, <laughs> to my amazement, he came back having worked for weeks and weeks and he actually played the entire piece, all nine minutes, without stopping once. It's truly, I think, a unique achievement by Sequoia. So by the way, if you have any pieces that are very difficult to play and you would like them to be played by a great pianist, Sequoia is available for work over at Sequoia Sound, so do check his website out. So coming back to the chords, 
I gathered together all of the pieces and I tried to just arrange them so that we would cycle through that series of chords going stepwise up and then looping back round. And my hope was that you might hear this change of chord th despite whatever happens in between. I'm not sure it works quite as well as I intended. Perhaps when I was testing it out, I was playing the chords very loud and staccato and I probably should have specified that to each composer because it's not always as audible as I thought it would be. But if you listen through, it is there, so do listen out for that. So as you can imagine, the logistics for putting together all of these pieces was a fairly Herculean task in itself. People sent through their scores in all sorts of ways and in all sorts of formats, so it was really tricky to keep tabs on everything. We certainly lost a few along the way, and if your score isn't included, I'm so sorry, but please know it wasn't anything you did, it was more incompetence on my part. There were also a lot of scores where we had to adjust the metronome marking a little bit to make sure it fit within the five second limit. But above all, I just hope we managed to keep the right composer's name attached to the right piece throughout. And finally, I did ask each composer for their location on planet Earth and to send a little video clip of themselves just staring into the camera. And I have to say it's been one of the most fascinating parts of putting this all together. So you get a glimpse of this person, you get a glimpse of the five second piece, and you get a glimpse of where they are in the world. And in your mind you just conjure up a sense of who they are, what kind of person they, they are that might have led them to write the kind of piece they did. Please let me know in the comments if there are any pieces you particularly liked that stood out. And also what you think of the whole concept. If we did it again, how should we do it different next time? Thank you so much to all the composers who were involved and I really hope you all enjoy it.